Up next, we got my man Steven coming all the way from DC. He performed at Bus Boys and Poets. He's currently on tour right now. Now he's here with us, Voices in the Wind, Destiny Pregnant with History. Culture. My culture is one of imagination. See, I was always taught to pull thoughts so taut that when I'm not thinking, I'm as loose as can be. See, my mom's side of the family is one of the many hard labor loving worker bees joined the army to get out of poverty, though the black lung wasn't near as dark as the lines in which my grandfather had to cross. And whether he knew it or not, it wasn't physical labor that got him out of that one. And I go back three times a year to see the same thing, same people with the same jobs, just more kids to take their place when they die premature deaths. See, coal mines are so unforgiving. And so is the structure that has been placed upon my family. The army was not his structured scapegoat. It was thinking outside of the box, maybe not our box, but his. He's an engineer. And I always saw math equations as days wasted in class, but somehow he looks past the ink and makes anything he thinks of, and somehow I see the same thought in machines my brothers dream up, but me, I'm left with unfulfilled thoughts and unknown purposes. They tell me, they tell me I get that from my father. Skinny man, I get my build from him, his face, more visible upon Michael, my brother, but his mind. His mind is captured in the crevices of my cranium. He was a smart man, a man who knew how to walk around any line drawn. A college dropout turned into a writer, turned into a musician, turned into a salesman, turned into a business owner, turned into debt, turned into bankruptcy. And many would say he failed. I, I would say he triumphed on the lines that he tried, and I'm trying, Dad. I'm trying to be just like you, but all I can do is try to emulate a picture on a wall that unsolidified stories are tied to. See, I was taught never to be a sure shot, because the shore, it leaves you stranded, and you wait endlessly for opportunity to float your way, but all that wash up are watered down pages of others' hopes and dreams. I would rather be lost at sea. My father died at sea in honorable death. Well, I'm left with footnotes on how to be a man. See, I was taught not to learn, but to teach. Teach myself everything I didn't know, but needed to know, but I didn't know I needed to know, so I'm left in the unknown. Sunday morning masses, creating more questions than answers, and when asked, expressions on their faces said it all. Or should I say nothing, because that's what everyone else does. My mother's teaching tools relied on the improvisation of our minds, somehow stretched past paychecks. We got by new. Each color tag corresponded to a different type of clothing, which in turn met the day we could buy them, and everything was half price on Thursdays. <laughs> hand-me-downs that were hand-me-downs one too many times. They became mine. But at least it was something I could hold, something I could grasp, something that I could smell. I mean, at least it was something. Something later in life I learned I didn't need. 12 years old in the middle of a thrift store saying, Mom, you can take it back. Really? And you could see the disappointment hidden behind her smile, not in me. So I opened my arms full span, which is half. It's half of a full grown man's, but at the time it was all she needed. Mouthed I love you's. They were only seen by store cameras, but they were felt by each of us. A lesson I will never forget. So now, when my mom cooks and cleans, I offer a helping hand. And if the food's burnt, I think I can suck it up for a night because she has for 16 years and you will never catch a glimpse of disappointment on my face when I speak of her because she's my modern day Mary and not even a saint could carry the weight she has to bear. And all I can do is let her know I'm here. Thanks to her, I'm here. And ever so grateful for life. I set standards according to others' needs. My mother's genes are visible in every hug my friends receive. I have nothing to give but everything we need, taught from hugs and smiles that happiness, happiness is free. My culture, see, it wasn't below the poverty line. I was taught to walk around that. That was a great performance, man. Yeah, I, you know, he's a true artist. I didn't know he was on tour for real, though. Right, right, So right. I, can, I can see why he's on tour now, but, you know, it definitely def came with some fire. What, I mean, what do you think? I, I, I was definitely able to visualize everything he was saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I caught a few of the analogies in there. You know, when he brought reference to some family members, I was definitely able to mm -hmm. 
be there with him. Yeah. Very enticing, engaging. And you know, it felt like you know he was actually in tune with it because I, f- I saw some emotion in there, some feeling. Indeed. You know, and Indeed. I felt that. So I thought he was good. But. With each second that goes by on the show, you're seeing the personification of destiny truly pregnant with history. This is label going on here. We'll be right back. The forest is stuck. Welcome back. I'm here with Steven after a wonderful performance. Uh, what, what was the inspiration behind it? Honestly, um, back in my years of high school, one of my teachers told me to do a culture map, and I didn't know what a culture map was. And she said to map out what made you who you were today. And I was always into poetry through all of my school years. Um, So I asked her if I could do a poem, and she said that was fine, and it came out with that piece, and I've been doing it ever since. That's good, that's good. I hear you're on tour now, it's um, Never never Sold Out? (laughs) Yeah, Never Sold Out tour. Um, I honestly, I've gotten a collection of poems together, and um, as you probably already know, uh, I'm coming out with a book called um, As Far As Our Mouths Can Take Us, and I wanted to promote it as well as my poetry, and I wanted to kind of go to more than just D.C. and more than the metropolitan area um, for poetry and so more people could hear my voice. Um, And I was never into managers and I was never into anything like that so I just thought to myself I would send in a promotion packet to a bunch of places and see how far I could get and it's gotten me to places like New York and you know Boston has a big poetry scene all the way to California so I mean. That's good. It sounds very exciting. Tell me more about your book. You say um your book is more as far as our mouths can take us. Is this a book of poetry or like a novel? Um, it's a book of poetry. It's a book of poems. I was first inspired to do the book by um, reading over my old poetry okay. and uh, looking at where I came from as a poet, um, from a- anywhere from my eighth grade, ninth grade years to now in my college years. And um, as I was as a poet, and I honestly, I looked at it and the progression of poetry I thought was kind of cool and I thought other people might want to, you know, read that and, and see how people can mature through their artwork. So, yeah. As far as the theme, Destiny Pregnant with History, and it was every artist's choice to what performance they would do. So what made you choose that poem for this theme? Honestly, um, I think it shows um, my family history and how it shaped me to who I am today, an outgoing person who, you know, I honestly think of myself as an outgoing person and I would hope to, for everyone else to think of me as an outgoing person and someone who follows their dreams just like in the poem. You know, I've never, you know, had any problem following my dreams and my family supported it all the way. So That's that, good. That's good. Well, I definitely appreciate you for coming on our show. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely a good poem. Definitely loved it. I was able to feel your intensity through that piece.